owned by the um, Catalan government. This is a map of uh, Catalonia uh, in which you can see the kind of, uh, well, not the kind, but the, the place where they are scattered all, all over our country. We have five museums, one conservation center, one scientific boat for underwater uh, excavation or archaeology. 31 historic buildings and archaeological sites, six open by appointment, there are really little things. One million visitors uh, per year uh, all, all, ob all over, okay. uh, 230 employees and a 19 million budget that is a lot less than uh, what should be, but it's the money we have. We have known of the big gaudy, fancy buildings that are in Barcelona. We are managing none of the big art museums in Barcelona. Uh, but we have some medium sized uh, archaeological sites or architectural heritage uh, buildings that are um, interesting. For, for example, on top, the walls of Ulla Estret. Can you say Ulla Estret? I, I can say a lot of Scottish uh, words too. Okay, uh, uh, this is an Iron Age uh, city that means 2,200 years ago. Uh, we will talk about that later. This is an aqueduct of the Roman city of Tarragona, named Tarraco in in, the, in Roman times. This is two images forum and. Uh, some of the uh, remains of the Greek city. It was the place where the Greeks, coming from Greece, uh, uh, arrived to the peninsula, the Iberian Peninsula, the, the first stop they, they made. And they made here because it was just in front of the uh, capital of the Iberians. They wanted to trade, Iberian too, and that's the, that's the reason that it's there. The Rome, I will show you later. We have 40 minutes only. Uh, some monasteries, I, don't, I will not explain uh, why we have monasteries, but we have a lot of them. With all the royal uh, tombs and uh, cloisters and fountains and so on. Some medieval castles. And a lot of, well, a lot, uh, some of in industrial spaces. <coughs> As you may know, Catalonia was one of the textile centers of the, in the 19th, ends of the 19th century and um, beginnings of the 20th century, probably like Scotland a lot. Uh, it was an, a major force of textile. And we have a lot of uh, uh, buildings from, the, uh, from this era. Some of them have, have been uh, transformed into museums. This one, for example, uh, here, is in Terrassa, a very industrial uh, uh, city. It has been uh, transformed in, uh, in a science and technique museum, but keeping the, the architectural feeling. Five museums. Four of them are archaeological, uh, and one uh, about art, medieval and modern art. Obviously, we uh, make or do a lot of different experiences, theater, uh, dance, uh, music festivals, whatever. And we use new technologies, but why and what for? Mm. Yeah. This is an Airbnb commercial, but I think it's interesting to know. Don't go to Paris, live in Paris. This is Airbnb. You can love it or hate it, but... You see the things that you are not uh, 
uh, that is bad to do, like uh, waving your smartphone or your tablet. Okay. Ah. Where is my okay then? Tangle the last pestaña. Yes. Okay, and then again in the other screen. Oh. Sorry. Okay. Then what we are trying to do. Uh, uh, in our uh, heritage uh, buildings is the same that Airbnb is saying that you can do in your travels. Uh, it's trying to um, the visitors feel for some minutes like living in Roman times or like um, having a, a, stronger, a stronger connection with, uh, with the past. The, we, we, do the, we do not like the visitors go there only to watch. Don't go there to watch. Go there to live. Okay? This is the, the motto was what we are working with. Uh, there is a lot of different technologies. We are not using only the fanciest. Uh, we are using from the very boring gallery brochures to maps, audiovisual, audio guides, multimedia guides, augmented reality, immersive rooms, whatever. But we try to do things with mature technologies. We are not doing things with the last flashy thing if, if it's not necessary. If you are working with images and texts, Maybe a really good design gallery brochure is working. Maybe you don't need a complicated uh, app for your smartphone if you are showing just images or texts to, to read. Uh, but when you try to get a sense of immersion, for example, we use VR. Because what VR gives you, none of the other um, uh, techniques can give that. I'm explaining myself, maybe? OK. Uh, I'm the technological guy in my organization. But um, uh, many times, I advise our museums and uh, directors of archaeology to do simpler, OK? Uh, we, we have two uh, methodologies to try one of these uh, technologies for every one of the works that we are starting. One is uh, to take a careful look to the strong points and weak points of every technology in, relation, in relationship with that project. And the second one is try to start uh, in the right way. What means the right way? The right way is your archaeological director or the museum director uh, comes to you with a problem. And you uh, uh, and you will give him a techno him or her, mostly her in, right now. Uh, and you are doing or giving her a technological solution for that problem. But I don't know in Scotland, in Catalonia, 80% of the time is the other way around. The director or boss, uh, whatever, comes and says, I want a VR thing. Uh, you know what it be? I, I saw in the TV or in the movies or whatever, I saw in my smartphone that there, there's flashy things in, in the apps uh, that are uh, um, whatever. 
let's do that. But which problem are you trying to solve? Mm, uh, probably none. Probably we don't have a problem to solve with that. And probably we must re reverse engineer to find a problem to solve with that. I, I will not show you that reverse engineer cases, that I have a lot of them. <laughs> uh, I have more slides, but I have not the time to, to show you. I have some slides about failures too, but <laughs> we have 40 minutes. If anyone uh, wants to know about our failures, just ask in the, in the last minutes, or in, uh, in tomorrow, and uh, I will, I'll be here until Saturday. I can explain all our fa failures. Um, I will show you three, if we have the time, three projects that went in the right, um, in the right direction. Greek and Roman city of Empurias. Oh, we have, okay, 20 minutes. What was the problem? This is an endless uh, archaeological site. Uh, where is my... Uh, you enter here, you have here a very beautiful Greek city, but for the newcomer is stones and stones and stones, all look the same, all looking the same, and most of the, uh, around half of the visitors gave up, uh, they go like here, like here, like here, here is the beach. <laughs> And you see that beach full of people. And, and if you are with kids, the kids are saying to you, let's go to the beach. <laughs> what, what are we, why are we here? There's only stones. And uh, no one was going to the Roman city, that it's beautiful too, beautiful for, for archaeologists. Um, and they end up here, and that's it. Uh, <clears throat> It's hard to understand because they are stones and stones and stones. The signs, signage, uh, are made by archaeolo any archaeologists here? Okay, right. Uh, our archaeologists write as archaeologists for archaeologists. And they are not talking about real life, but I'm an art historian, I'm doing the same when I, uh, when I work in, uh, as an art historian. Are, are, are writing only about what stone comes first and what comes second, and a flashy color scheme of uh, no one cares. Okay. <laughs> what was our solution? The solution was a, a simple one, a, a really normal audio guide, but important for every visitor, not as an option. Because the audio guide will be, will be, will be, must be the main interpre interpretation tool for the visitor. And uh, an audio guide that uh, has wayfinding that explains you what are you, uh, what is around you, what, where to look at, and how interpret interpret it. And some storytelling to give you more feeling about that Roman life and uh, get a glimpse of uh, how that times were. If I can manage it, I will let you hear. Uh, where is I will let you hear two tracks. A ver. It's working? Yes. In an open space in the middle for letting light and air into the rooms. A courtyard. Roman and Greek houses needed an open space in the middle for letting light and air into the rooms. A courtyard. This mansion, or domus in Latin, had two of them. Walk a bit further down the street, and you'll see some broken columns around a small paved rectangle. This rectangle was called an improvium. It gathered and filtered rainwater which seeped down into the cistern underneath. See the two covered drains? 
they were used to pull up stored water. Rainwater ended up in the impluvium thanks to the compluvium, four tiled roofs that covered the rest of the courtyard. This kind of courtyard, called atrium, is typically Roman. By the way, you've just come into the mansion via the same entrance hall that was used by the Romans, which led straight to the atrium. If you walk past the impluvium, you will get to the tablino, which was a room where the head of the family met with his business associates every morning. Okay. As you'd expect, the most public area in the house was the closest to the street. You understand the concept? They, uh, the guide is explaining what you are seeing. You are not seeing any more stones. You are seeing things that you can understand. And even you hear uh, some water sound there that can spark a little your imagination when they uh, explain how the roof were. You are seeing that, OK? And in some places of the, uh, of the archaeological site, we did uh, another thing that is uh, little theater pieces. Sorry. Um, this, this was about uh, trying to explain a, a, um, a complex concept. Uh, why the Iberians, like uh, Scott people, or whatever, whatever uh, indigenous people in, uh, um, in the Roman Imperium, started to uh, um, uh, let uh, down his uh, their own uh, identity uh, started to be Roman. How this process was made, and here we he here we hear uh, uh, an ambitious Iberian that is in this process, and why he chooses to be uh, Roman, because uh, he has earned the citizen status. He just. Ah. It's hard to believe that a word could change. Sorry. How many times have you crossed the forum with his head down, dodging? Mm. Okay. It's hard to believe that a word could change everything. How many times have you crossed the forum with his head down, dodging the gates of the As always. always. Keep your head down, as always. Keep your head down, as always. Let the old men grumble as much as they like. In any case, they'll soon only understand one another. Young people only speak Latin now, and they speak it better than the Greeks, they say. Every man to his own house. Who wants a house? And you can have an empire. Who wants a house? when you can have an empire. This is why so many people get into that empire concept, okay? Well, uh, let's go to the second project. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> This is probably the best project we have ever made. Uh, it's a video mapping uh, project in a little church in the Pyrenees. Okay. Uh, teamwork, a lot of people. The church, just in the frontier between Spain and France. Wall Heritage site with beautiful paintings. Romanesque paintings, 12th century. This is how it looked in uh, 
1904 in the left and uh, more or less 10 years ago. Uh, but in, 18, uh, in 1918, uh, an American dealer bought the right to strip the paintings and export it to American museums. Okay? The first one went to Fine, uh, Fine Arts Museum in Boston. It's there. And the other ones, uh, the Catalan government, it's a long story, but I have no time to explain. If anyone is interested, I can, I can do it. Uh, uh, bought the rights of the paintings to keep it in a museum in Barcelona. They, uh, they thought that they can never let it in its original place because after that American dealer will come a British dealer or a German dealer and it will, it will be gone because it was that time. And you know about it. <laughs> okay. Then the, paint, the real paintings are now in the uh, Museo, uh, Museo Nacional d'Art de Catalunya, National Museum of Art in Catalonia, in Barcelona. Then, this was the awful look of the church in the 60s. A copy was made, but it was in really bad condition. But, this is my uh, specialty when I'm doing the art historian hat, eh? when I have my hat of uh, art historian. Is uh, there was a, a, there were a lot of remains of the original paintings still in, in the church that no one uh, was taking attention to, okay? Then the problem: the the visit the visit numbers were declining. Uh, people were staying for 15 minutes or something like that in in the inside of the church. Uh, there wasn't quality inside, conservation problems. What we had, a lot of fragments. Okay, I have uh, that. What was our, our solution? Returning the painting architecture continuity to the church and make a copy to install there. We have, in Catalonia, we have uh, plenty of copies in, in the original places. We started thinking about a physical copy, but this is some old photographs I can understand. But uh, in, in, the, uh, in the actual walls, there were remains of the original uh, painting. Then we started to think about a virtual copy, a copy projected. It's not a show, it's a virtual copy. We are, it, it must uh, be seen not, not like, like a theater thing, but uh, you, have, you must see nothing. You must enter to the church, see a church, and see the paintings there, and that's it. The technological part is our problem, not visitors' problem. We have a scheme of six uh, projectors. If you, if you want to know about it, in, in this little card there is um, just look in, in internet about Taul Milsen uh, what is uh, wrote there. Uh, you, you, will, uh, you have a 30 minutes uh, documentary in English uh, about the process. Okay. Uh, this is about the basics of video mapping, but I will. Uh, and this is the end, uh, the end result. Okay. Um, we thought of a 30 minutes. Uh, uh, I'm exhausted. Yes, that. A 30 minute cycle of visit in which almost uh, 15 or 20 minutes you are here, you are seeing the paintings in the walls, like if nothing had happened. But after that, you, you start to see a show, this is, uh, is nine minutes long, uh, in which you will be transported to the 12th century and you see somehow how the paintings were made. And uh, we try to individualize all the characters that are painted, all the um, uh, iconographical uh, aspects of the painting that are important to 
C. We are not uh, answering questions. We are making questions only. The answers, you can look for the information after that. You are working on the real place and you must respect the real paintings. This is not a place for doing projections of whatever. This is, these are paintings and that's it, the real paintings, okay? If I can manage it, uh, let's see if I can find the right screen. I will show you a short making of three minutes or, so, or four minutes maybe. Four minutes, okay. Might. No, I think it's, it's, it's okay. Okay. The copy. Restoration of the remainings. Four months of work. Bisturi. Scan laser of the chart to make that 3D model. Phot high resolution photograph of the pa uh, um, paintings in the museum hours and hours of work, digital work. So some of these you acquired from Boston, right? You had to go... No, 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 no. This is, uh, Boston is, is there. These are in Barcelona. It's another church. Right, okay. Okay. I had the Boston paintings in my... <laughs> in my hard drive, too, because we wanted to do that. Okay. Warping. And this is important. Ah, oh, sorry. Okay, it's critical match the projection with the real paintings because you are doing a, a, a real thing in a real place, okay? It, it was a, a lot of work because if you are projecting over a blank space, it's not a problem, but here the leg, the hand must exactly be placed in, in that place because you are seeing the both realities, virtual and, and uh, ah shit. Okay. Medieval instruments recorded and uh, gone through a, a digital instrument. Animation, and you will see here a three minutes excerpt of of the projection. We wanted to show, not explain, show which was the process and, as I've said, individualize some, uh, some iconographical uh, important points and the quality of the painting. You are seeing how it was painted. You are understanding while no one is explaining. You are seeing it. That's it. <clears throat> Ten minutes more. Okay. The final twist.
and you are again in the reality. And a lot of people uh, ask, where are the paintings? This is what we wanted. And they are seeing the paintings in its place. Okay, sorry. Uh, okay. Ah, okay. okay. There is a lot to explain about this, uh, this project. If anyone is interested, again, I'm here until Saturday. Ask whatever you want. Uh, but here you have real paintings, half and half, and virtual paintings. And you are not seeing a difference. Uh, a lot of uh, conservators or, uh, or, or archaeologists or art historians are worried about authenticity and fake. But here you only must wait for 10 minutes and you see what reality is. You can do, if you have respect for what you have in your hands, you can do whatever you want here. Obviously, all the projections you have seen is all scientifically, scientifically based, all whatever. Huh? Okay? Let's go to the third uh, project. We just thread, we just say we just thread, please. <laughs> no? No one? It's brave enough to say we just thread? Maria. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, we just thread. Uh, as I've said, is uh, the capital of the um, uh, north of Barcelona tribe of uh, Iberians. We were fighting each other, as right now we are doing. Okay, uh, the, the the common people always has an image. A, a clear image of a Roman city and how a Roman uh, and how Roman people were also for the Greek cities and Greek people but known of you and known in Spain knows how a uh, Iberian city looked like because of the um, conventional idea of Iberians is a uh, savage uh, people that lived in little villages made of turf and whatever, okay? But this, is, it, this was a 7,000 capital uh, that ruled an immense territory and that had two settlements, one in a hill and one in an old island surrounded by a lake, a lake that uh, was connected with Empurias for marshes, uh, marsh, okay, and uh, we know I'll, I'll, we knew uh, the, the archaeologist team that worked in Ullastret for years, for ten years, have made a, a, a extensive research in uh, conventional uh, physical excavations, but also in geo radar uh, and uh, other techniques, things that can give you some information without uh, digging. Okay, what was the problem? We just threat no one else, a little village, but was the major capital of the Northern Iberians. Population has not a clear image of an Iberian city. What we had, a lot of archaeological uh, information about that city. What was our project or our solution? Not making videos, not making images, not making 3D model, uh, not making VR experiences. Make uh, an extensive 3D model uh, which all our archaeological information inside of it. And then after that 3D model export whatever, hundreds of images from any kind, uh, any, any point of view, the videos that you need, uh, an immersive room for the museum, a VR experience for fairs or, or uh, night of the museum, whatever. We, the important thing is the 3D model, okay? And we have done this 3D model. We, we were, any video game hardcore lover here? Right, okay, okay, uh, okay. We loved very much uh, video games. 
I love video games. Uh, one of them that inspired us a lot is Assassin's Creed, obviously. Not the Greek Assassin's Creed, but the, the, the one of, uh, about Paris. When I was, I, I, I have not a PS4 or something like that, but some friends they have. <laughs> and when, uh, when I started to look at the kind of reconstruction of the, of the city, not only uh, architectural, but the life, the interiors, I thought we have not that uh, Hollywood uh, budget, but if we can, we must be close to that, closer to that, uh, that we can afford. And we didn't use an archaeological or architectural uh, 3D model software, but video game software to allow any kind of, of, uh, of export uh, thing. Yeah. As I said, immersive videos, whatever. We go to methodology and I'm sorry. Let's see if I can show you. Yes. Okay. Three minutes again. The model. Archaeological information. Not only the city, but the surroundings. We have a... a an immense array of experts working with that. 80% of the time was, was in, invest in uh, translating the archaeological information into the 3D model, not making the 3D model. Making the 3D model is 20% is, is of the time. Looks a lot like a Greek city. models of the uh, objects that we had in the museum and the visitors can see that objects you have some videos again in YouTube <clears throat> okay can catch up again. Okay. Then we made, I don't know, uh, uh, maybe 200 different photographs that we uh, upload to Flickr, uh, to Wikipedia, to uh, illustrate all the articles about Iberian. We wanted to create an iconography of uh, the Iberian city and spread that idea and that image all over. Uh, when you are seeking for Iberian city, you must found this, not a stupid drawing of made 10 years ago. Okay? Then, in the museum, we need to uh, translate uh, this meaning to the visitors. It's a very tiny museum, it's really small. We had only one room in which we can did uh, a, a, an intervention. It was 10 meters square, no, uh, yes, 12 to 15 square meters. And you can put here maybe six to 10 people. And we made a video with a strong storytelling uh, that is, uh, that is uh, playing uh, here. We used uh, a lot of, I don't know if I have, no. Uh, I scrapped the, that uh, slide. Okay, uh, we worked a lot with the archaeologist to make a list of concepts. The archaeologists make a list of archaeological and historical concepts. We, the communication people, made a list of um, feelings, or, or um, human concepts, and we both worked to connect it, these archaeological and living uh, feelings, through places, 
events, objects, and spaces. This, uh, this uh, our, our own circle, and we give that to the scriptwriter. And the scriptwriter made a story uh, from our original idea that uh, an ancient chief of the city is dreaming about his lost city. That, that's why it's empty. We cannot afford characters. We have only for money for architecture. Then it's a dream, and there's nothing there. Right? Okay, that, that works. That works uh, in this way. Uh, and uh, he is traveling by the meaningful spaces in his history. He explains. I don't know if we have the time to show. Okay. If you are going to test the VR experience, you will see the same. And you will be crying after seeing that. Okay. Uh, that chief remembers how he arrived to the city, the walls, the moat, the fields. And while uh, the boys are uh, saying that, it's like in Empurias. You see the walls, oh, the walls, uh, the moat, oh, the moat, uh, fields, oh, fields. Okay. That's, we are uh, trying to, uh, to uh, the visitors understand what, what is in there. And they go to the old house where he learned to fight, but he was not strong enough to stop the, the, sons, of Rome pouring, the sons of Rome pouring in. My arm was not strong enough. Uh, I learned to fight here. Oh, I am, and now again and again, I'm dreaming <clears throat> the same thing. My empty city, my lost city, the sacred uh, bird. We 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 also included some religion uh, of uh, some sacred animals. Uh, the magic bird is coming for me and uh, give, uh, and take me away again, and you end flying over the city. Okay? This is the storytelling. You are seeing a lot of things, but you are understanding, and you are seeing how the, how the city was, physically. Okay? Then, after the immersive, the immersive, uh, the immersive room, uh, as it was made in a video game software, in this case Unreal, Unreal Engine, uh, it was really easy when HTC uh, uh, made the Vive to export it to a virtual reality experience. It was, it was a little tricky because in, uh, in the 3D room you need a constant... Uh, I lost the name, my brain is starting to... A constant movement uh, for seeing that 3D uh, the 3D shape of things, traveling. Sorry, you have a constant three, uh, a constant forward traveling. But in virtual reality, which HTC, you have two meters by two meters space in which you can move. Then the you have to set all the all the scenarios. But the important thing is where are you putting the visitor? For example, we choose a corner of a, of a street because when you are in a corner, you are not, normally you are looking like that. We, are, we were trying to provoke the movement of the people. Or when you are inside a, a, a room with a street uh, outside, we are not putting the, the visitor uh, in the center of the, of the room, but in the door. One leg in, one leg out. Because you can get in, but there's a street there, and you can go there. And, oh, it's a, there. Are, okay, huh? that, that's the, the kind of. It was a, a really easy work to do because we, we have the storytelling, we have the audio, we have the music, we have everything. We give to an immersive uh, company, and in a week, we, it was exported to virtual reality. <sighs> Different strong points. Virtual reality is amazing, but it's a tricky beast. And, and it's really difficult to implement in museums. Physically and concept, conceptually. 
because when you are in a museum, you are in a, in a mood, you are in a pace, seeing things, you are in Glasgow, in uh, today, here, but when you put the, the headset on, you're going away, you are in another time, in another place, it's not like seeing a movie, it's like seeing a movie that is so compelling that you are forgetting you are in the cinema. You, obviously, you have felt that, that uh, sensation uh, so, sometime in your life. But when you, when you are in virtual reality for two minutes, you have forgotten where you were. And, okay, I'm 50 something. Uh, it, I, I've tested a lot. Maybe uh, millennials uh, behave different. I don't, I don't know. But for common people, it's not easy to place some virtual reality experiences inside a museum path. Path, sorry. Uh, or page, too. Uh, because you are putting them 200 uh, or 2,000 years behind and back and forth and it's stressful and you are breaking the experience of the museum. It could be made in the beginning, in the end, mm, whatever, but it's a tricky beast. It's so powerful, because it's really powerful, that you must uh, treat it like nitroglycerin. Okay, and is now is ninety percent of the time it's individual experience. You cannot have it uh, group group all experiences. I'm lying. You can have it uh, for people, but it's expensive. It's difficult. You need a lot of space, and that's it. You need for an interactive experience. You need a lot of space. If you are the BNA in Dundee, it's not a problem. <laughs> but in, in actual real medium-sized museums, it's a problem. Because if you are not having eight positions, it's five minutes uh, experience, 10 people is 50 minutes of waiting. Uh, 40 people group, what are you doing? What are you doing? Scheduling. And this is a, diff is a different activity with a different, you are, uh, uh, you are booking that activity, treating not like a uh, um, regular uh, part of the, of the visit, but like an activity, it's so much easier. That's why in Ullastret we, we choose the immersive room, because it's social, you can get a family inside, they are getting uh, in, the, in the experience all together, they can talk about it and go on. Okay, I think I've run out of time right now. Okay, yes. And uh, lessons learned about VR after two years. I've uh, told about it. And we think that uh, the flashy uh, surface of VR is starting to fade. Now, if you are um, advertising your activity, if you say that is a VR activity, I don't think it's working uh, as it worked two years ago. Because, in fact, VR is not anymore in the, in the new technologies, graphics that are some uh, companies or advisors are, are, are drawing. Virtual reality has gone all the way all the way the uh, okay uh, all the way down and it's out of new technologies because it's not new anymore okay you must advertise your experience that includes uh, vr i don't in the mobile world congress that it's in barcelona every year two years ago there were lines and lines for uh, VR things. Last year, the VR headsets were on tables and no one cared. All the people were trying to get a photograph of the real Ferrari 
that was Ferrari uh, F1 Ferrari that was in uh, I don't know what um, uh, techno company was there but he was a Ferrari and everyone, everyone was fighting for taking a, a selfie with the, that Ferrari and all the VR headsets were like that like this no one cared obviously we are talking about very high-tech people who is being there but this is only two years behind of normal people okay I, mm, VR is amazing but you have to think in projects and make uh, that VR working for you and if you in, in, in fact are uh, dealing with photographs and uh, texts maybe you can do a brochure <coughs> okay <clears throat> if anyone is interested in starting to learn about uh, VR uh, storytelling I strongly recommend to read in the first place Jessica Brillard he was for some years the VR principal director uh, of Google he has come to Barcelona to to that uh, mobile World Congress two times and he has uh, and she has uh, sorry she has uh, <clears throat> uh, grasped very well the differences that are huge of the traditional two-dimensional audiovisual mindset and the VR mindset. I don't like at all the videos that they, uh, she is making, but she has understood really well. She has a, a, you know, Medium, the website that is about modern things. If not, just type Medium in Google and Jessica Brillard, and you will, you will uh, find there I think it's a series of four uh, posts about the mm, differences between two-dimensional uh, uh, mindset and uh, three-dimensional and, and VR. Because when normally, 99% of the time, if you have a cinema, a film, very bright uh, director and you put it in VR he will or her will be trying to do something that is framing that is because framing is the basement of audiovisual uh, communication okay this is a movie now the car okay and in VR it's not about choosing it's about being there the first question is that the visitors will ask um, itself is why I am here because it's not seeing something he is in a place and if you want to do something there is something around you a lot of 360 videos are trying to get the attention of the user okay uh, like a sound like there oh that's it oh sound like there oh yeah. but VR is a different thing VR is intrinsically interactive there is not uh, not any other uh, experience that can compare to a VR game with interaction you are there and you start to do things and things start to happen there is an alien uh, alien the movie VR experience you can imagine what I'm talking about eh? being in that corridor you remember all the eh, that framing experience uh, looking here is not here uh, framing again the, the, the screen the, the green dot is here is here oh it's not here Black. Imagine that in VR. I have uh, uh, really, really funny videos of people uh, playing 
zombie games in VR. The screams are <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> I have, so, yes. Uh, is an incredible opportunity for disabled people. I'm not, I have not the time, but it's, look for that on Google. Look, hospitals uh, and VR. And I think that will be enough for me. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry for cutting him short, uh, but I'm conscious of the time. There's so much more, and you know, very compelling from the experience. Uh, were there any questions or comments uh, from all of this that uh, you might have had? Yeah? Uh, I have a question. Is it I'm um, middle. I have a question about Project 2. Yes. Uh, it was any other, other problems to the rear object? Uh, the, the conservation uh, light and so on? Right, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, this is uh, the first question the conservator asked to us when we, we, say, uh, we, we, we say to him, we are trying to project into, <laughs> you say what? Uh, and, and start to measure light. And uh, it's uh, quite interesting because uh, the light that we are projecting is less light than the regular uh, lighting because in the first place it's not white, it's red on the red color, blue on the blue color. This is 30% uh, of the light that when you are uh, lighting normally. Then when you are doing the mapping is the best for the conservation because it's the less light they have. When the, the, the projection is over and you lit the charge, is when they get more light. After that, they are, uh, uh, oh, I can remember the name, non-organic, unorganic uh, paintings, and they are not very much affected by the light. It's not like paper or textile or something. Mural paintings like this, are not much affected by the lights, except the blue that turns um, uh, black. But it happens. It happened 200 years ago. Then we are not reverting that. Okay. Next one. Okay. That was a great talk. Thanks, Albert. Um, I was really just uh, intrigued about the process of putting together a story. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that experts, so archaeologists and perhaps museum curators, conservators, yep. provide details. Yep. You then scope what kind of emotions you're looking to elicit yep. uh, in visitors. Yep. Uh, are audiences, potential audiences, target audiences involved in that process? No. That we are whole fashioned. <laughs> we, we, we do what we want to do. Uh, I, I'm sure I'm uh, sorry for the uh, audio. Uh, I'm sure I'm, I'm right. <laughs> I, I, I'm advocating for the visitor. Uh, I'm more a visitor than an art historian. I can take off my art historian hat and advocate for the visitor. Obviously, we can uh, ask the people and do the right way. But normally, in our organization, in, in this state of the uh, of the things, I don't know if it's correct in English or whatever. Um, we are doing like this. Sometimes it's important to ask the people, but I'm a little Steve Jobs uh, kind of uh, uh, thinking. I know better than them what they want. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, but, but, it, but it is. Uh, uh, because I'm a visitor. When, I, when I'm doing a, um, uh, a project, when we are always is a, is a team effort. Um, for example, in the second, you have seen all that people. And they were three directors, one archaeologist, me, uh, as an, um, as an uh, technology people, but uh, also visitors advocate, 
and an architect for all the architectural. And we were arguing constantly. Uh, we kept, we, we were thinking different things. It, it went well, but other times uh, has gone really wrong. But uh, I think I can grasp what people want. There is some slides that are not here about that kind of, uh, of thinking about the visitors. Um, and uh, as I said, I advocate for visitors' point of view strongly in, inside of organization. That's an interesting, I think, that's the whole politics of the organization and the way of doing things anyway. And I'm conscious there's some people from the participatory memory practices project as well that uh, it's not necessarily right or wrong way, but at the moment. I'm, I'm telling the truth right now. I, I could say, no, we, we do, no, we haven't done. We have done some websites with uh, groups of people saying, uh, organizing the, you know what it, what it is. We have done. But more or less, they are saying what we think that they, uh, yeah. If you ask for a video mapping, uh, uh, people is not uh, aware that what can be done. Obviously, as I said, we have failed a lot of times. But uh, the more risky you get, the more percentage of, uh, success, of success you have. The, the best projects we have done are against the common, uh, the common op opinion of our, uh, of our uh, um, board. And I remember, how can you think about uh, doing that in the church? Are you crazy or what? And two years after that, it's fabulous, it's wonderful. We have failed too. But we are, we are always thinking two years ahead, two or three years ahead. I am thinking, not doing today, but how it will work two years uh, or three years uh, ahead. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering, so in terms of kind of constructing virtual reality experiences, yes. I'm also slightly wary that, A, you know, you mentioned the, the fact you're up against Hollywood, that you can construct something which will look quite dated within uh -huh. quite quickly. Yeah, so what, absolutely. What, what can you do to kind of... For, for example, yeah. this, uh, we have a lot of problems with that 3D model because we normally have the money for flashy things and, no, and it's impossible to get the money to keep it working. Uh, we have the virtual experience working and I get some little money to keep it working, but the 3D model, we have discovered that the entrance is not there because we have excavated all half the moat, it's huge, it's, 30 meters long, uh, profound, and 10 meters uh, deep. It's big, and where we have depicted the entrance, it's not there. It's, we think that is maybe 50 meters on the right side, they have, th and we need some money to uh, uh, um, get uh, that changes uh, in the 3D model, and we are not getting that money because it's boring that, and bosses are one flashy things. They say, no, forget about two years, you have done two years of work there. Start with uh, this monast Lucy monastery that you have here. Work there, not there. And we have a lot of things to do after that, and we are not waiting. <sighs> um, as I said, we prefer to work with mature technologies. When you are in high-tech technologies or uh, very recent uh, developed technologies, this is, a, this is a, uh, the price to pay. You need some money to keep it working and always you have change, you must change the, the headset every year, every two years. But in the end, the hardware is not the problem. It's the, uh, it's the, the content yeah. that you can... Uh, it's not so expensive in the end. Okay. 
more questions there is uh, some yeah okay, I was wondering you like to make this pretty model of the city so you want to make a complete model so people could see like everything but I'm guessing that everything is not always there for example like the building is missing it's damaged and you can't really tell how it looked like in the past so how often do you have to kind of imagine it uh, there is uh, I'll, uh, uh, scientific papers uh, wrote about that uh, the archaeologist uh, team has wrote if you are really interested you, you can uh, you can see how it was made but in fact making the 3d model is also a research project because uh, you put uh, the archaeologist facing the questions because in in two-dimensional uh, plans it's really easy to uh, draw uh, a house, but when you are going 3D, which dimension had the window? It, it were like that or like that? The archaeologist must be brave and choose. And yes, uh, choose not, um, as we say in Spanish, by the face, by my beautiful face, but base it in all the scientific research he can uh, get. We had uh, even specialists of uh, the vegetal uh, species that were growing between the uh, the, um, the water of the of the lake and the uh, and the, the ground, and uh, and when the specialists saw the the three D, they said, "No, I think the the water must be." A little dense because it must be more dirty, uh, and this way everything. Okay, no, it's that material. It it, it was, as I've said, the the um, the most intense the most intense work was to translate the archaeological information to the three D model. It we had an an um, an individual archaeologist inside the team for a year and a half. That was translating a brave archaeologist. That is not possibly, <laughs> you cannot put possibly in, in the 3D model. But if you know something like the entrance is not there, you can change it. It's not a problem. It's not like, it's not like in a book that you must print again the book, okay? An interesting uh, issue you touched on, and it's a lot of um, work among the research community on documenting uh, a bit more accurately the 3D models and accompanying that work. The London Charter, for example, is also arguing that we need to document the gaps yeah. and all this process that sometimes is hidden behind the very extensive process. Yeah. VR can be too strong and too believable, and sometimes you lose some of the, the gaps in knowledge or, or personal interpretation, which is a big issue. And to be fair, this has been an issue in this community for a very long time, not just within cultural heritage, but also all kinds of 3D implementation okay. in video gaming, yes. in the digital arts. Yeah. We have been asking for documentation of process and changes through structured methods. But you can do that for scientific people in scientific papers. It's not needed to uh, um, paint in different colors the walls of the of the city that th this red uh, stripes is because uh, we know what it is you must do that but in the scientific paper not in the vr experience because you you have a lot of different uh, uh, different choices to reach different people it's it's not a big issue if you have uh, get wrong something there because this is giving an image, a general image of, of that, and is giving an image of the scientific knowledge we have today. And if you, if you know something more tomorrow, you must do the work to update it. Update it. Okay, thank you. Easy. No, it's not easy, but you must do it. Yes.
they are trying. I think with this fact versus fiction documentation versus yeah. immersion storytelling, I think it's a good appropriate way to finish with questions rather than close, like we said everything you say. So thank you very much for all of you for coming and well bear Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.